It's the final countdown to Pesach starting this weekend. We need to sort out the Pesach food, set up the Seder, clean the house, search for Chomets and burn some Chomets as well. And since on Chon Maid we also can't do laundry, we need to get all our washing done before Pesach starts. There's a lot to do. Our parasha gives an unexpected perspective on this, courtesy of the Yismach Moshe, a renowned 19th century Hungarian mystic. He picks up on a little anomaly in our parasha. Two of the sin offerings mentioned near the end of the parasha show a small variation from each other. One is the sin offering of the Kohen Godel, the high priest, which he had to bring if he sinned by mistake. The other is the sin offering brought on behalf of the entire people when they are all mistakenly taught the halacha wrongly and do something that they should not do. In chapter 4 verse 6, the Torah tells us that the Kohen Gadol has to sprinkle the blood for his sin offering towards Poreches HaKodesh, the curtain of the sanctuary. However, in chapter 4 verse 17, where it talks about the sprinkling of the blood of the sin offering to be brought when everyone sins, the word HaKodesh is not mentioned. It just says that the blood should be sprinkled El HaPoreches, towards the curtain. Where has the holiness gone? The Yismach Moshe commentary explains this change with the help of a detail in the Pesach story, Moshe meeting God at the burning bush. When God spoke to Moshe, he commanded him to remove his shoes because the place that Moshe was standing on was Admas Kodesh, Holy Land. Couldn't God have just met Moshe somewhere else that was less holy and saved in the bother? The Yismach Moshe explains that God was sending Moshe a message of reassurance. The mighty holiness of that place was not because of God, but because of the Jewish people who were destined to receive the Torah there in the future. God was telling Moshe that the Jewish people, even enslaved as they were at that time, had the capacity for greatness and would be spreading holiness right then and there into the world. So Moshe was not to think that he was on some hopeless fool's errand to rescue a people who did not deserve to be rescued. The reverse was true. Despite the spiritual degradation of Egypt, the Jewish people still clung on to vestiges of goodness. They knew that they were Jews, they were not immoral, they resisted the mood and trends of ancient Egypt as best they could. This helps us understand the difference in terms between the two passages in our parasha. In the offering of the Kohen God who sinned, we are looking at the sin of an individual. So the temple retains its title of Kodesh, a sanctuary, because the holiness of the entire nation still lends holiness to the sanctuary itself. But if, God forbid, the entire Jewish nation sins, as is the case with the second passage we looked at, then our national holiness is almost lost. It is as if the temple loses its sacred quality. It is stripped of the title Kodesh, and the Poreches, the holy curtain in front of the Holy of Holies, is almost just a pretty piece of fabric. And this also helps us to understand our work in the coming week. The cleaning away of Chomets is not just a physical preparation. It represents a deeper spiritual cleaning as we clean forbidden elements from our souls with each morsel of Chomets that we get rid of. When we do this en masse as a community, we bring a great holiness to the world. It is such a shame when people equate Pesach preparations with the slavery in Egypt. The slavery was murderous injustice. Pesach cleaning is a vast Jewish awakening. With our care and effort, we turn our homes and our souls upside down and create a sanctifying holiness, our gift to God and to the world. Such a beautiful offering makes us worthy heirs to the Exodus story and makes us worthy to sit at our Seder tables with pride and hope for the future.